Hello everybody, we are back with Green Gaming Fest, Spring 2023. I am your host, Mike. I am joined by Iron and Spider, who are going to be running a run of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. They're doing a race. Uh, would the two of you like to give a quick introduction? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is the last run of the marathon, so hopefully we uh, put on a good show for you guys. My name is Iron. I'm racing uh, Spider. This is a really fun category. Uh, that we both spent quite a lot of time working on. It's called Starfall Street. It's one of the uh, individual stories. We'll have some time to talk about each of the stories as we move move along here today. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, Spider, you want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Spider C. I'm, like Iron said, I'm one of the runners of the game who does a lot of the single story. Um, and this is um, one that we've spent the most amount of time on and we will both be doing um, routes that we made individually and so they're going to look very different from literally the second we start. <laughs> uh, and helping us muddle through the rest, the muck of uh, confusion will be Trevaria. Uh, so go ahead and introduce yourself as well. All right, yeah, uh, I'm Trevaria. Uh, you may recognize my voice from doing a Let's Go Run earlier in this marathon, and I also run this game, so I'll try to do my best uh, to do commentary here. Excellent. And I just triple checked. Audio seems to be pretty good. Uh, they're all coming through. So cool. uh, without further ado, if uh, one of you wants to count us down, uh, I'm ready to uh, to hit the timer. All right. Uh, let's go in three, two, one, go. All ah. right. Uh, the rats are going to be a little different right from the start because Iron is immediately going to leave the town I think no I'm thinking different movement here uh, where spider is gonna do some shopping I'm doing some shopping too but this is just for marathon okay. safety <laughs> <laughs> I see. oh you're going to an entirely different delivered presence than yes because I want the uh, the rare candy on the way I see okay and they both flew to this eastern Pokemon Center in town and then jump over the fence. The reason for this is if they were to walk through the gate, a, a short cutscene would trigger, and by jumping over the fence, they skip that. Uh, so I'm going to pick up a couple items on the ground here to start. Polka doll just some, for some safety, and then an awakening because we will likely get put to sleep in the final, in the second to last fight, so having yeah. an awakening early is very helpful. Yeah, much of the first part of the run is going to be about A, acquiring the actual main Pokemon for the run, and B, picking up loads of helpful items that will be, uh, yeah, like I said, very helpful for the fight. <laughs> I already have my main Pokemon, but I'm going to catch a uh, backup support Pokemon, which is required. Oh, I can actually get up here. <laughs> and I need to go catch my main uh, in just a couple minutes. Uh, so one little trick I did there is I went off a ledge, and then it gave me a prompt to go back to where I was. Uh, we do that a few times in the run. So yeah, uh, Iron just said that uh, he already has his main Pokemon, and the reason for that is that he will be using the Water Starter uh, for, yeah, as his main for basically every fight, with a couple of exceptions. And you just closed your game. What happened there? I'm loading my. We have backup saves. Um, the reason for that is um, the catch that I just did and Spider's catch, it could break out and cause problems. So um, we're, we have saves that are set up. So these won't be eligible for PB attempts, but we have saves set up where we have everything we need. Everything I grabbed already, I will have. I will have my Luxio. And uh, it is a 95% catch with a Dusk Ball, but um, also we have auto save on because um, there are some pretty nasty fights later on, which if we lose, uh, it could be very problematic. So. Uh, we're both going to be doing a uh, reset. Uh, Spider will do his a little bit later when he gets his uh, his main. 
And the other reason for the uh, prepared save file is that while Iron already has his main, um, only 23% of my main is runnable. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's true. <laughs> I definitely wanted that backup. Yeah. So I guess we should talk about why autosave being enabled is significant because, well, we're not going to be seeing the entire game here. Instead, uh, we're just going to be seeing the single story run of Starfall Street. So it's going to be about uh, taking down Team Star, uh, the evil team in this game. Uh, the community created these runs for the three single stories um, because, you know, it's kind of convenient. The game already splits them. Uh, and they make for a lot shorter runs compared to the any percent run of this game, which is like five and a half hours long. Um, and to make it a little more bearable to do these runs over and over again, we decided that it would be best to cut out the intro of the game, which is like 50 minutes of mostly cutscenes with a little bit of walking here and there. Um, so we usually prep our save files and we reuse them for every new PB attempt, which also means that we would usually disable autosave, mm -hmm. because otherwise we couldn't reuse the save files. That was uh, very fast when I'm at. All right, yeah, but for uh, marathon safety, autosave is enabled, just to put a cap around that. <laughs> Normally I would just throw a ball at this, but it's not a guaranteed catch, so I want to weaken it for safety. Yeah, so Spider mentioned his main is like 23% runnable. Mine is even less runnable, uh, because it's a starter, so you reset at the beginning for the starter, and um, I, don't know what, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's much worse than 23%. You want to have pretty solid attack, um, uh, and then you also want good defenses as well, and good and decent speed. Yeah, and the reason why mine is uh, such low odds is because I need a pretty good speed stat, um, but then the more important thing is that I need an ability called Tinted Lens, um, and what that allows me to do is it allows me to hit um, not super or not very effective moves for neutral damage. Um, so I just have way more flexibility in what moves I can use in what situations. Um, the other ability... Whoops! I immediately get an encounter after switching to my save file. Oh, <laughs> oh we're pretty that even actually... right now, so that's good. Yeah. Neck and uh... neck here, coming out of the first section of the run. Okay. Well, there goes my one Poké Doll. I'll have to pick up other ones. <laughs> I mean, there is another coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Would we have time for a donation? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, because we have an anonymous $50 donation, which Thank we you. are very appreciative of. That means that we've planted 50 trees. Uh, but we also have Cheese Reaver in with a $185 donation. Wow. Holy the comment God, is, as someone who is chronically addicted to oxygen, planting trees is important. <laughs> and that's just a little reminder that we are donating towards one tree planted. They plant one tree for each dollar that's donated, and they're very highly ranked among charity review organizations such as Charity Watch. Uh, so you know that your money's going Ooh, to good. a good source that will have a direct impact. Thank you very much. Okay, here I'm at the area affectionately known as Ratio Rock, because it's very easy to get ratioed by random wild Pokemon. I almost did there. <laughs> there is a Satoddle. I somehow messed up my river jump ends after people fly. That was questionable. Oh no. Huh? That is now at Ratio Rock. And it appears to be clear. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, there's a flittle. I don't know if I can get around that. <laughs> I think this it, is a it is kind of It is kind of dangerous uh, to walk through this area because the Pokemon that these two have are pretty low level. So if they accidentally run into a wild Pokemon, they might not be able to get away without using one of those Pokedots that Spider just picked up. 
so outside of just saving time you want to avoid encounters safety oh. as well uh so the reason why we're walking around so much since we haven't actually said this <laughs> is um so first off we just want to pick up items that will give us um what we need to actually beat the game um the primarily thing being exp candies um, which just give a lot of EXP for our uh, Pokemon. Um, but the other thing that we're doing as well is we're hitting all of these fly points that we're going to be later using to get to the objectives that we uh, need to complete the run. Um, so, for example, I'm about to hit this Pokemon Center, uh, which I will then fly to later. Yeah, this is the case for pretty much every single category of this game. Um... There's no, the only mandatory fights are effectively like the gym leaders or the bosses. All of these trainers you see in the overworld, they're all optional trainers. They don't see you if you walk in front of them. You only fight them if uh, if you talk to them. So. Which is generally not great for a speed run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You try to do as minimal as possible. Uh, so getting, luckily there's all these experience candies and rare candies scattered about, which uh, we effectively, all, every single category of this game does this what we call around the world where we literally go around the world and pick up items i also like halloween because we're getting candy that is true that's a good one too well both uh our runners here are now at my least favorite movement section of <laughs> each uh, scarlet speedrun and that is movement on the mountain in paldea because uh, it gets pretty slippery and uh, kind of hard to navigate around those And slopes. there's Grievards. And there's Grievards, yes. Yeah, lots of little Pokemon. <laughs> Grievards are particularly annoying because they hide in the ground uh, and so you can just kind of wander over them. Oh, there's one. And another. If, <laughs> if, uh, if I can also chime in yeah, again, go for real it. quick. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out that if you donate $5 or more, you are entered into win a huge prize pool. Uh, we have several copies of several games offered generously by Devolver Digital. Uh, Minute, The Messenger, Terra Nil, newly released. Uh, Inscription, Death's Door, Bro Force, Hotline Miami 1, and Disc Room. Uh, I've personally played through a lot of those games. They are fantastic. Uh, just some of the best indie games that you that are on the market. So if any of that piques your interest, please drop some money. We are very close to hitting our donation goal for the marathon. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, another item that I just picked up right there was the Modest Mint. Um, that's going to allow me to change my nature to Modest. Um, which is going to increase my special attack damage and lower my attack, um, but I don't need attack, so uh, I just, <laughs> it's just a straight damage increase for me. Um, technically, it's not necessary. You could just get lucky, but I don't want to reduce my runnable odds any further. Yeah, so normally with the mints, you just try to reset for good, or... You try to get the, the individual values or IVs that you need, and then you just use the mint to uh, to change that. And it makes things a lot more consistent. Uh, luckily for me, I got to choose my starter from the beginning, so I don't, I don't need to worry about changing anything at this point. Although some categories with the starters do change with mints uh, here and there. To help. Uh, and one other thing that's been that we've been doing while we're doing our movement is. Uh, you might notice that we have been dismounting as we go over slopes or um, trying to land in specific spots to slide instead of getting a hard landing. Um, when Coridon hits the ground after falling, after being in the air for a certain amount of time, um, he gets a hard landing animation, which just wastes some time. So we either try to slide at the end of a landing or dismount uh, and then remount at the last second so that um, those hard landings don't happen. Where 
Where are you at on your around the world? <laughs> I am uh, getting the candies that are on the way to the furry base. Okay, I'm heading to fighting. Yeah, this is where the routes uh, really start to oh. differ. Because uh, both of them are going to be doing a different order for the bases. Since this is an open world game, uh, you know, runners can choose uh, the order in which they take on the objectives that are part of the run. So, actually, I forgot which, which base do you do first, Iron? I'll be doing the fighting base first. Kind of ironic, right? You, you're approaching the ferry base, which is going to be the first one that Spider uh, will take on. <laughs> spider is approaching uh, the fighting base, so. which is the one that you take on first. Yeah, so all my order is going to be um, fairy, poison, fighting, fire, dark. Um, and then... Uh, so we're only going to match up at, at the dark base. Yep. <laughs> so I'm doing... Fighting fire, uh, poison fairy, dark. Uh, it's a different order that I do for PB attempts. Uh, the reason for that is there's one fight that I do in f for the ooh, for the very first base, which if um, which risks uh, dying to a critical hit. It's not a high chance to die. It's like 124. But if it happens, then it's really bad. I have to do the whole base again. Because uh, the autosave, uh, unfortunately, only saves right as you enter the base. Uh, which would be very catastrophic. <laughs> so, uh, I'm changing the order up a little bit. It's not really going to lose me that much time. But the real reason why I do the fairy... I usually do the fairy base second. Fairy is also really bad. Uh, I have a type disadvantage there. And so, uh, the fight against the boss could go pretty poorly. Or, by poorly, I mean you could lose a lot of time. And so, uh, it's uh, it's just better to do that one first, because then you could just reset if uh, your time isn't very good. And then, my base order, um, I don't really have any issues with any of the fights in the bases. Um, so I do fairy first, um, because you get some um, special attack EVs from the um, Pokemon outside, which basically are just going to raise my special attack even further. Uh, and then I do poison second, um, because poison is the laggiest base, so I just try to get out of the way early. Oh yeah. These games are very I'm notorious for lag. <laughs> um, depend actually speaking of, depending on the weather, when it's time for me to go to the poison base, I might end up delaying poison. Um, because if you get rain during the poison base, it gets... it gets rough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so right now I'm doing my movement towards the dark base, which, like I said, will be my last base. So I won't actually uh, do the base for a while longer, but there's a couple EXP candies that I want along the way. Um, so I'm just doing the movement now. Yeah, I think I just did that movement. That Persian looked funny. I don't think it was shiny. It was looked funny to me. Uh, this game has overworld shinies, so you can and will see shinies during runs. Yeah, uh, this is actually quite funny. Spider and I, we were, I think we were both just doing <laughs> routing as, or stuff for this game. Um, we both saw a shiny Sneasel in the, almost the same spot on the same day. <laughs> Which is pretty wild. Oh, that was a bad jump, but that's okay. I just got rain, so hopefully that goes away before I start <laughs> fairy. Uh, the weather in this game is random on, I think, five minute cycles. Um, so I should be fine given how much more movement I have to do, but it actually will be a bit close. Oh, there's the lag. Yep, I can feel it. <laughs> Uh, which is also part of the reason why I am, I don't know if Iron is or not, but I'm staying zoomed in most of the time to uh, get some lag reduction as well. Yeah, I do that when it's uh, when it's raining or snowing, but not normally. Okay. 
I do it for found it doesn't help too much, for my, at least for my end, but I've definitely seen a difference when it's snowing. I notice it a lot while heading to Ferry. Um, that when I zoom yeah, in, my do leg it. goes down a lot. So we talked about the bases a little bit. Trevara, do you want to explain sort of what, how the bases sort of work? What do you need to do when you get to the, each of these bases? Sure. So uh, at the beginning of each of the bases, going to be one fight against a grunt or similar, which is pretty straightforward. It's just a, a standard Pokemon battle against all things considered pretty weak trainers. But after that comes the interesting part because this game introduced a new mechanic, um, well, two new, new mechanics, I should say. One of them being the let's go feature where you can send out your Pokemon just, uh, you know, to, to do its own battles with uh, the wild Pokemon around it. And they also use this let's go feature to create effect in the base rates that we're about to see also called uh, star barrages. So um, in order to be able to challenge the boss of each base, they will first have to rate the base with there are three Pokemon sending them out individually to defeat the Pokemon that, well, the team sends out uh, in the overworld. So it's not going to be standard Pokemon battles, but instead kind of like auto battling, where um, they really have to manage their movement correctly and their, um, well, which Pokemon they send out against which enemy Pokemon because. Um, more so than in regular Pokemon battles, typing and devil difference play a huge role in these auto battles. At least we think so, because so far we really haven't been able to figure out what the exact mechanics of those auto battles are. But that's kind of what we think is happening, you know. Yeah, level seems to matter a lot, uh, and stats definitely do matter, but we don't know how much. And then typing matters to a pretty good degree, but we don't know the exact formula by any means, which is very different from uh, regular Pokemon routing where we know basically everything. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to finally do my X item shop, which I delayed earlier um, to pick up that extra rare candy. So then I got the five X specials that I'll be using for the run. And then the next storm thing, that, on the mountain. <laughs> yeah, it's snowstorm in the mountain is always a fun time. Um, and then the <laughs> next thing that I'm picking up is the most important item, actually, uh, which is TM Sludge Bomb, um, because Venomoth does not learn Sludge Bomb through level up for some reason, um, and it is a extremely good move for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's funny. I was, I was actually looking at Venomoth when we were look, trying to figure out what works really well for this, and I kind of discounted Venomoth because it didn't have a good poison move, but I later learned that there was a really good spot uh, location for a TM, so uh, that ends up being huge for Venomoth, for sure. Yeah, and the funny thing is that I was originally just looking at Venonat slash Venomoth as a possible partner Pokemon for Barrages, and then I was looking at it further, I'm like, wait a second, this is a really good main. Um, but I am just wrapping up my Around the World right now. I have a few more candies to do, and then I'm going to do my big menu of the run. Which is what Iron is doing right now. Cashing in on all of those uh, experience candies, evolving his duck into its final stage. So yeah, that's what the next minute or so is <laughs> about. Both of them evolving their Pokemon, uh, using all of this items doing, that they yeah. picked up. Quite a yeah, few evolutions. An extra L, so I can use three less mediums. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally used uh, ten larges instead of nine. So I'm just wasting three or er, one thousand XP, which isn't too big of a deal. If I can right. chime in with another donation here. Yep, go ahead. Cool. Uh, Brother Doink donates $1. It says, here's your dollar, folks. Good job. Now, that may seem 
somewhat insignificant or weird, but it pushes us uh, definitively over the $1,000 raised uh, limit for this, uh, or, or, or amount for the marathon so far. So congratulations, everybody who's donated. We have planted 1,000 trees. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Technically a thousand and a half, so maybe there's an extra seed in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, Coquavel is a very controversial Pokemon. Not many people like it for some reason. Uh, it works very, very well for this category, though. Don't look at its feet. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that it has a very uh, strange idle animation in battle where it just keeps moving for the entire time. It's a little strange to look at for a prolonged period of time. Which is why I chose uh, to use Venomoth when I dab it in this category a little bit. It is raining. Oof. Um. Rain is actually interesting for Duck because Duck is a water type and water type moves are boosted by the rain. So you can actually have, there's one fight and technically the fighting base, because I'm doing the slightly safer strat, there is a backup strat you can do here, which saves some time, I think. I'd have to, I have to actually go find my old notes just to be sure. I, I doubt it'll be raining by the time I get back there, but we'll see. All right, so I've finished my menu. Uh, I have all my Pokemon evolved and leveled up and whatnot. So I am heading towards the fairy base for my first barrage. That's right, 25 minutes in and we're about to see the first battle. <laughs> Here on, on Iron Sign. <laughs> Welcome to Scarlet and Violet speedrunning. Uh... And what you'll immediately notice is that the move animation, the move animations are turned on, and the reason for that is that there's no option to turn them off, unlike in basically every other Pokemon game in the past. So uh, for some reason, that just isn't possible on Scarlet and Violet, which means that a huge part of routing a speedrun for this game is to um, pick the moves with the shortest possible animation time. Uh, and that's part of the reason why Tinted Lens is so good for Venomoth, um, because in certain situations where I would otherwise have to Psychic, which is a very slow animation, um, I can instead use Sludge Bomb, which is an okay animation. And I think the deck just has pretty long animations across the board, right? Acrobatics, close combat. Acrobatics is not too bad. Um, Acrobatics is like four seconds. Really? That was, no. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, we consider that long in uh, Victory Road or Use Flamigo as the main, so I don't know how long the other animations are here. Well, close combat and wave crash are pretty long. <laughs> also, I will say that. <laughs> And Aqua Step is also very long. So Acrobatics is actually pretty fast as far as things go here. In comparison, yeah. <laughs> and here we go. Iron starting out the fighting base raid. The about to see those autobots that I've been talking about. This base is pretty bad. The Pokemon are pretty high level. My Luxray and Oink alone are going to faint multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Yeah, Oink alone just has a rough time in this base because it's normal type, so it's weak to the fighting type. And of course, they're just very under level compared to what uh, the enemy Pokemon are at here. Since this is, I think, supposed to be the final base that you do. Yeah, that fighting is the highest level one. Uh, and then the one I'm going into right now, Fairy, is the second highest. Uh, true, do you want to explain Stop and Goes? Yes, so, um... Usually when you send out your Pokémon into this 
auto battle mode, um, the trainer is gonna, well that's gonna be a little bit of a, uh, an animation where the trainer sends out the Pokemon and uh, you can't move during that so you're basically stunned. There is a trick that you can do where you walk, you stop walking and like just a couple of frames later you press the button to send out your Pokemon and that will cancel the animation and we call that a stop and go. So uh, ideally both runners will try to get that cancel, that animation cancel as much as possible here. Yeah, like that, like what's the pattern on iron screen and then immediately after came the usual animation for the second Hariyama there. Not my best because fairy. The bases, yeah. Because the bases lag so much it can be pretty tough to hit the timing for like, the animation cancel. Okay, fighting is not not fun, <laughs> but made it through. Yeah, you have ten minutes to defeat thirty Pokemon, but generally we're uh, we're finishing these bases in anywhere from one minute to two minutes. It's not terribly difficult to do that. Yeah, better than what is right now. So we're about to see two of our first uh, boss battles here against the base bosses of the Fighting Heaven Fairy type base. The most notable part about these fights uh, is the ace Pokemon that they sent out last. I guess we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, these, these fights are weird. You don't get experience from them either, which is kind of odd. So what's the strat for the fighting race here? Yeah, so I want to take out Toxic Rook right away. It can poison you. Um, it's not a great Pokemon to set up on. I'm going to be setting up on this next Pokemon, which is Pisinian. Um, ideally, my goal is to get into Torrent HP, um, which is Coquavel's ability. And there's a bit of a meme I know in a lot of tournaments and whatnot is, explain what Torrent is, but and this isn't a Pokemon crowd, so... When Quaquabble, like here, goes below one third of its HP thanks to that critical hit, my water moves are going to do 50% more damage. And this is pretty huge because um, normally this Pissimian only knocks me to about half HP, but because it got a critical hit, which does 50% more damage, I can save a little bit of time coming up here because I do not need to set up where I do not need to use Wave Crash, which is one of my very slow moves, but it's a very, very strong, powerful water type move. Um, so, normally right here I would Wave Crash to take a bit more damage to get into uh, Torrent, but I'm already in Torrent, so I can just KO this Lucario right away. Uh, the strat normally in PB attempts would be to set up another X attack on this um, Lucario, but I obviously wouldn't be able to do that because uh, I'm already in Torrent and it would actually kill me <laughs> because of setup. Okay, here's the Starmobile. You want to explain this one, uh, Trevaria? Sure. So uh, each of these bus trainers has their own Starmobile as a, an ace Pokemon. These are based on the regular Pokemon Revolution, but instead of being what is it? Steel and Poison type? Yes. Uh, the type I died! Of... Shit! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh my... Really? Oh, oh I still won though, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll have to like figure out something here to revive this thing. Anyway, carry on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, okay. Um, yeah, but those star reveals so, are really weird, okay? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they have, um, unlike basically every other Pokemon ever, um, where <laughs> their stats are derived by their level, um, the star mobiles just have hard-coded stats. Uh, and they're weird stat lines, too. They have a lot of HP, a lot of speed, and then... Everything else is kind of scaled based on levels, defenses. yeah. But I think they can't get crit or something. That right? is correct. They also cannot be crit. 
Um, they also reset the counter on Echoing or er, Echoed Voice, which is very weird. <laughs> yes, any move that builds up power through subsequent turns, it just gets reset for some bizarre reason. <laughs> Spider found out that that out the hard way. Yeah, I, th I thought I was a genius for using echoed voice strats, and then it just did not have the mobile. Yeah, they um, the sound beats are also pretty fast, so um, a huge like criteria for picking a main for this category is always going to be speed just in general, because um, if you're faster than the opponent, they're gonna get to attack less. And with these star mobiles, it's extra important because, well, they're the ace Pokemon, usually the strongest, and especially with the fighting and the fairy base band, can become kind of a problem if you don't outspeed your opponent. Yeah, I take um, one hit from the fairy base, or from the fairy star mobile, um, just because I can't in order to one-shot it, I would have to take a turn setting up, so I would ga lose a turn to gain a turn. Um, so I take one hit from that, but mm -hmm. all of the other star mobiles, I will outspeed and one-shot. So yeah, we just talked through cutscene hell there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> after every phase, there would be like three minutes of cutscenes, roughly, uh, where there's just gonna be a a little bit of uh, lore dump uh, about the team that we're supposed to take on here. Uh, yeah, Th that's what Scarlet is all about, just doing one fight and then sitting through three minutes of cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all of the single story runs have a pretty decent amount of cutscenes. Uh, it just comes down to how much other gameplay there is in them as well. <laughs> Siren is about to go into the fire base here, which is one of the weaker ones. I don't know if it's the It's the second. One. Yep, second weakest. Okay. Which means the barrages are the barrages will, are uh, generally fairly clean. You don't have to worry about your Pokemon fainting. It's generally quite quick, um, but twice as fast as the fighting and the fairy. Fairy can be quick if you get lucky on the spawns, but fighting is always pretty I slow. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was not a very good fairy. Um, yeah, there's the, one Pokemon the... in particular that you like to see in the fairy base. Um, the Tinkatuff line um, has fairly low defenses, or however star barrages calculate. Um, they tend to go down pretty easily, and your Pokemon don't take too much damage in return, um, which is very helpful, especially given that, like I said, it's the second strongest of the bases. Um, so your support Pokemon generally aren't doing too hot in those. Oh, I didn't heal my duck. Shoot. All right, we'll see what. Oh, no. uh, I believe what in Luxray. You do? We'll see what happens. I think Luxray's here, so uh, Luxray might be able to handle this fight. Well, I'm holding my breath. Against, oh, okay. Uh, oh, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Right. Okay, bad. so if anyone didn't didn't guess, I was clearly <laughs> playing it up. Um, that death was intentional. Um, the um, that fight technically you don't have to die to. So in this case, you don't have to worry about having Luxray fight this Houndor. But there will this will be happening again later, um, where it's faster to die. And um, the next base you fight, you want to fight either the Fire or the Dark base, um, because their Pokémon in this Grunt fight are much weaker, and Luxray does a really good job. Uh, so that that Houndor dies to uh, Spark pretty much consistently. The one time it doesn't is when Luxray has the ability Rivalry, which means if Luxray is female, because that Houndor is male, its uh, attacks will do 25% less damage. And I actually would not be able to knock out that Houndor in one hit. And I had a really funny fight earlier today in practice where it used Roar <laughs> and by uh, Oinkalone finished it off. <laughs> so, uh, got the whole and team in the battle, which is pretty good. On the marathon. <laughs> but that Luxury's male, so I don't have to worry about that. And I get a free heal here, so, uh... 
my duck has been revived. You do get quite a few free heals in this game. Um, free heals are very often very good. Some, in a lot of cases, they're not so good. Um, as I mentioned before, like duck's ability is torrent, so being at low HP is beneficial in some cases. Yeah, but all the free heals make it basically impossible to go into important fights with torrent already active. Yeah. The huge downside of all of those heals. Alright, and it's just blazing through the tiles here. Uh, and Fred is about to go into the <coughs> poison base, the laggiest base of the run. Well, when there's no rain, I. Like, if you. if When there's rain, poison is definitely the laggiest. When there's no rain, I think fairy might be the laggiest. Yeah, I agree. There are certain areas in the fairy base that are very laggy. I think the biggest problem about the fairy base is that there's a lot of water on the ground, and, um, well, the game just has a lot of trouble with water. The laggiest yeah. area of the game is the giant lake in Caldea. Because, you know, there's so much water, light protection that have to be rendered and whatever. So. Yeah, it's something with texture. The te if it's a complex texture, then the game just has problems dealing with it. <laughs> um, and speaking of lag, I'm doing the poison base in a very specific way. Um, because yeah. if I don't end my barrage standing in the center of the base, um, then I will get a um, 14 second loading screen. And unfortunately, I have a pretty bad poison base, so this is going to be interesting. Oh, uh, there should be more Pokemon around here. Okay, there we go. Just do that, and move back here. Okay, I should be fine. Okay, so yeah, this base is uh, pretty easy. Her Pokemon are like level in the 30s or so. Um, this um, Melo, who has the crazy boots, as Mike mentioned and mentions in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just knock it out easily with uh, single hits. Level 26 is actually the level, but uh, the really good thing about close com about this about the Starmobile fights, which is that's a benefit of them, is your moves like secondary effects. Um, you don't actually see them. I think it's actually it's not just the Starmobiles. I think the last Pokemon in battle. I'm not sure which generation this started, but if you have a, mo a move that has a secondary effect, like lowering your defenses, like Close Combat does, you don't see that animation and those text boxes play. So it's a nice move to use to finish off the Star Mobile here. Uh, so here in the poison base, I'm going to be setting up on this skunk tank. I'm going to use one X special. Um, the skunk tank will always go for sucker punch, uh, which doesn't do anything if you're not using an attacking move yourself. So I don't take any damage on my first turn of setup. Um, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing in the fighting base, where I set up on Ares Krogunk, um, which will waste its first two turns using sucker punch on me as I do nothing. Apparently Atticus has an actual river room on top of his star room here, so <laughs> yeah. I always find that funny. It's a real it's a real river room as well. With proper stats. <laughs> Just gonna uh, chime in here real quick if you yep, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We got a five dollar donation from uh, Kello H. Matic. So, thank you very much. Might just be Kello Matic, I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, back to fighting that car. <laughs> uh, and so this is the spot where um, Tinted Lens is really helpful for me, um, because if I didn't have Tinted Lens, I would have to be using Psychic on all of these Pokemon. Um, 
which, like I said earlier, Psychic has a really slow animation. Um, but since I'm able to hit them for neutral with a poison move, uh, I can use Sludge Bomb instead. Well, all right. There are more cutscenes to watch here. But yeah, this is Penny. Yeah. I have a I have a love hate relationship with Penny. <laughs> as you will, so? as you'll as you'll potentially see later in the run. Yeah. So out of, outside of the bases, there are two characters that keep popping up in these cutscenes. One of them is Clive, and the other is Penny, uh, who I just finished talking to. Uh, they're the ones that are working with you to uh, take down Star. There's also some very mysterious person called Cassiopeia, who's calling in on a phone. Exactly. I wonder um, who that could be. <laughs> yeah, that's the person who um, instructed us to take down Team Star in the first place. So uh, we're following their instructions, but they haven't ever shown their face to us. So we don't know who they are. <laughs> Cassiopeia, huh? That's a constellation. So stars. Very interesting. <laughs> And if you've been paying attention, the bases have very specific names. My other joke. I'm not gonna that, uh... spoil anything. <laughs> but you know, if you if you stick with us for the rest of the run, I'm afraid you are gonna see some spoilers. One of my other jokes is that uh, stars are bright and moths are attracted to bright lights. So Venomoth is the clear main for this category. It's <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> well, I'll counter that by saying the music for the Starfall Street uh, story, all of it, all every single track is a banger, and Quaquavel is the dancer Pokemon. So that is fair. I actually disagree because I think the uh, theme for the penultimate Starfire Street boss fight is kind of boring. You oh, don't for... like that theme? Wow. The last one, know. the second last one. This is the second to last one, yes. Oh, last okay. One. Yeah, it's not quite as okay. good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the music is the real reason to run this category. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one other thing that I just did that I don't know if we talked about yet is I dismounted when I went into a cutscene trigger. Um, if mm -hmm. you don't do that yourself, then the game forces you to dismount, uh, and it's just a little bit slower when the game does it for you. Uh, so we always try to go into the cutscenes uh, dismounted. Yeah, so if anyone's... We kind of were talking about the, the relationship between Cassiopeia and the, the names of the bases. Uh, but the uh, oh, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> okay. I think that's probably a good idea. I don't know where you were going with that, so I'm I looking actually forward don't to even it. know what the names are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about it a bit later. It might be. It might be a bit. Uh, might not be the right time to talk about it. All right. So if you're curious, don't go googling or anything like that. <laughs> Just hold on a little bit longer. Yeah, so you see, I got this. The, the auto, I got the auto save right before entering the base. I don't get another save until I leave, so I really don't want to die in here. All right, so Iron is going into the poison base now. Hopefully, there will be no more rain. And uh, Spider. Oh, look, who it is. <laughs> Spider is doing the grand fight for. Then on that. Hiding 
See, I didn't even think about that, but Aaron does get to beat up on, on Spider's main here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to beat up on Quackable in the second to last fight. And I get so to beat up works. on the main that nobody likes, which is Flamigo. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> Flamigo's a menace. Flamigo is a very good Pokemon. It's was at one point the best main in every single category for main the main board for this game. Um, but since then, uh, for Path of Legends and Starfall Street, we now have different Pokemon, which is quite nice. It's quite nice to have some variety. Yeah, and the var variety is very strong, particularly with this category, because there are currently four pretty competitive different main for this category. Uh, Vile, Venomoth, uh, Haunch Crow, and of course Flamigo is still there. <laughs> yep. As the fourth one. And then as uh, Iron and I were trying to find other Pokemon, we also routed an additional three or four Pokemon on top of yeah. uh, the ones that have been... Well, we didn't route Haunch Crow or um, Flamigo. No. But... Yeah, so I... A lot of yeah. Pokemon have been for this category. So I've routed Scyther and Toxtricity. Those are the two that I looked at. Uh, I've done um, Wigglytuff and Braviary. Oh yeah, that's right. Braviary is a really interesting one. Braviary would be good, but you can't catch one at a good level, unfortunately. Yeah, so um, the level cap in this game is actually also very important when it comes to keeping the main. Because um, I think starting out, the level cap is like level 20. Yep. i pretty sure it's exactly level 20. Uh, and it only um, rises with gym badges. So if your category doesn't beat any gyms, your main is going to have to be level 20 or less if you want to be able to actually use it. The run because uh, if you get a Pokemon at a higher level than the current level cap, it's gonna just randomly not do what you tell it to do, so it's gonna be disobedient. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, it's especially okay. important in this category um, because if you have a Pokemon that won't obey you, they actually just won't even let you into the Star Barrages. Yeah, so that's why we don't go and catch something level 50 to bring into the Star Barrage, is to be able to handle all these Pokémon. We have to take something that's 20 or under, and we usually use a bunch of candies on it, so that it can perform a little bit better. Ooh, I was real close to having to cross the bridge. <laughs> oh, with the fighting base? Yeah, I got, yeah. I got close too. <laughs> and the, yeah, uh, there's... The fighting... yeah. Yeah, the fighting base is basically a straight linear shot, unlike the other bases where you can choose how you move around them. Um, and if you run out of Pokemon at a certain point, then you have to cross this bridge where there's just aren't any Pokemon, and so you have to do a lot of extra walking. The Bridge of Shame. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we talked about how rain is kind of bad for uh, for bases. Rain actually helps a little bit on the poison base fight. Uh, not the actual barrage, though. You don't want it to be raining there. But if it rains just before you enter the fight with Atticus, you actually don't need to set up an axe attack on the fight at all. You can just use water moves the whole way. The water moves are kind of slow. Um, actually, that's not true. You just wave crash the Starmobile, and that's it. Well, speaking of rain and giving a benefit um there is a very small benefit for getting rain in the fire base um because oh, yeah. mela's <laughs> um mela's torkoal has the ability to drought which causes it to be sunny um but in this game if there is weather outside um all weather changing abilities and i think moves um fail yeah. and so her uh her Torkoal will activate Drought, and then it fails, so it, it saves a little bit of animation time uh, if it's already raining when you start the fight. Uh, so I set up to plus four 
on my airy fight, and so now I'm just going to one-shot the rest of her Pokemon. May I chime in with a donation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Nonstop Nikki donates five dollars and says, "You're all awesome. Keep up the great work." So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Some some great praise. And that five more trees. Five, exactly five trees. <laughs> Donations are going towards one tree planted. They plant one tree for each dollar that is donated. Reforestation is a very good cause. Uh, without it, we wouldn't have any of the beautiful trees you are seeing in these Pokemon games. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go so far to call the trees in this game beautiful. But, uh... <laughs> well, they're they're prevalent at least. They're they're yes. they're all over the place. <laughs> I've been having fun throughout the marathon looking at the uh, at which games have trees in them, just because that's uh... sort of the theme. <laughs> <laughs> now the trees in these the space have have been painted, so I don't know about that, but that can't be too good for, good for them, unless it's a natural thing. That's Grafia, actually, so it might be. Yeah, if a Pokemon does it, maybe. Yeah. We don't know what that paint, paint is made of. I don't think I want to know what that paint is made of. <laughs> Fair. This bad is just finishing up the fight against Eri here. Alright, laggy, uh, laggy map fly there, leaving the poison base into laggy fairy base. Good luck with your fairy base. Thank you, I'll need it. <laughs> so I picked up a guard spec there. Uh, that's a pretty useful item. I uh, Spire doesn't have to worry about that, about guard specs. Uh, you'll see why it's important. For a duck. It's kind of yeah. Generally far, speaking, far. I was yeah, yeah, sorry, just going to say that generally speaking, Venomoth has a very safe fight in the bases. Um, Quackwivel is, I think, a bit faster, but it does have some dangerous moments. Mm -hmm. Fairy being pretty much the only one, although fighting has a bit of risk as well. Yeah, because of the fact that the fight, uh, the fairy base is quite high levels, uh, fighting types like uh, Quackwaval and also Flamingo struggle with that a little bit, at least compared to Venomoth, um, that have a type advantage against fairy. Well, and uh, dark and types <laughs> like Hunchcrow. That's right, yes. So basically every main uh, struggles with the fairy base except for Venomoth. Forgot about that, but then also um, the last couple of fights of the run uh, are pretty tricky for physical attackers, which Quackwabel is, but Venomoth isn't. And Venomoth only attacks with special moves, so uh, we're probably going to see quite a bit of difference on those final fights here between the two uh, routes. What'd you get from Morgrim? Yeah, Morgrim's... So the, the interesting thing about this fight is, this game is specific fights. The trainer Pokemon have some degree of randomness to them. I believe that this trainer is one of them. Uh, the Morgrim, sometimes you see it use a move first because it has the ability Prankster, which means it has it as a status move and it chooses to use that move, it will go first every time. Uh, so you'll see their nasty plotter torment. If you see torment, that means I have to switch to Aqua Step on the Hatrim, which is a little bit slower because it's a slower animation. But um, some trainers, I believe, have random natures. <laughs> Correct. So Morgrim uh, is the only Pokemon in this category that has a random nature. Oh wow! Yeah, it's yes. kind of strange that. The, that one Pokemon in that fight has a random nature and the other one doesn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we found we found we found that out. I think Trivaria found that out in one of her runs of a different category. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
he's caught, or at least I've caught, um, but apparently not everyone caught Oh, that. there's some tanks, um, perfect. <laughs> that uh, most like, random trainer fights uh, that are in boss battles have a neutral nature on each of the Pokemon, so uh, a nature where none of the stats are unfactored in any way. Uh, but turns out that that's not the case. Many of the uh, runs that we fight in this category or gym trainers in other categories um, just have random natures, which sometimes can mean that they have a nature that benefits their defensive stats. So I once went for an attack in a victory road run where I was certain that I was going to one-shot the enemy because I thought that the enemy Pokemon had a neutral nature, but um, no, that Pokemon just randomly rolled a plus defense nature uh, <laughs> and lived on one HP and wasted a bunch of my time. Because of that. Yeah, and so then after that, the uh, the community had a bit of a testing frenzy to try to figure out what happened there. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't immediately apparent that it was because of random nature. Uh, runner Dynam was the one who was able to confirm it after spending a while trying to confuse a Pokemon with uh, that could not be confused. <laughs> but we figured it out eventually. All right, not my best fairy base. So for this for this route, you want to see uh, the Meryl line, also known as Pika Blue. Uh, because it's a water type. And uh, Tink a Tink is also quite good, but for some reason they are really doing a number on my Luxray. I don't know why. Uh, it probably has to do with the stats to some extent, so. Bit of a slow base. This fight is particularly nasty. There's a couple ways to do it. <laughs> we absolutely do talk about that. <laughs> So yeah, not only does Iron have type disadvantage here against the fairy type, but this uh, enemy Pokemon here also knows the move. I think it's Charm, right? And yep. Aira, both of those. So and we want to see it right now, because I'm leading a guard spec. Yeah. That's basically why you have to use the guard spec here. Charm, charm, charm. There you go. Guard spec, guard spec prevents your stats from being lowered for five turns after it's been used, meaning that uh, you just wasted their turn in here going for a stat lowering move. That was Aerof a lot of damage. Has, yeah. Aerof also has a chance of lowering your attack, which would be pretty bad for yep. the luck. Uh, the fastest way to get through this fight is to just YOLO X attack turn one and hope that you don't see charm. <laughs> uh, and hope you don't get baby doll eyes from the third Pokemon in this fight. But if you want to play it a bit safe, like for a marathon, I just lead guard spec, hope to see charm. I got it, and then I set up an X attack. And even if it crit, I still would have lived, and I would have been in Torrent HP, which is what I want to be uh, for this fight. So I'm going to have to wave crash on... Dosh bun. Great pun. So yeah, wave crash is very slow, but it's super nice to set up torrent. And that comes to stamina. Yeah. So as we both finish up this base, uh, our routes are going to sync up again, uh, and so we'll finally be able to get a uh, idea of uh, what the difference is in our time. Oh, I died again. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't think I could fool you guys again, so yeah, that was intentional. We're going to see Luxray again in battle. I think we're really close, actually. We're fairly close. 
Because um, Ortega's cutscene is longer than Mela's. Is it? Mela yeah. has the char cadet thing. Yeah, Ortega's is the longest. Um, G or actually, Giacomo's might be the longest. Uh, Aerie and Atticus both have short ones. Yeah, I never really timed them out, but... I know because I split on badge. <laughs> yeah. And so I have a general idea of how long they are. Yeah, so, uh... They're both gonna do the dark base last here, which is why we are actually gonna be able to see them run side by side here in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. But the... Even if one of them were to pull ahead here, that wouldn't necessarily mean that the run's over or the race is over and decided at that point. Because the final two fights, the final two boss fights of this run can be very tricky, uh, can waste some time here and there. Uh, so yeah, it's, it should be pretty close right up until the end here. Also, I wanted to pick up on um, Iron. You mentioned uh, the move Baby Doll Eyes during the fight, which is mm -hmm. a move that will become important later. Uh, yep. uh, one more time, because um, well, Baby Doll Eyes is a move that lowers your attack, but it also has a priority of plus one, I want to say. Yes. Yep. So, um, moves with priority will always move first in battle, so even though um, the duck would probably outspeed um, the wiggly tough there, baby doll eyes would still go first, lowering your attack unless you have the guards back out. Um, so if the enemy knows that move, you always have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And in earlier games, if Pokemon had a move like Charm or Baby Doll Eyes, it might just spam it over and over again if you have a guard spec up. Um, but later gens, it stopped doing that. So once the once it, you use the guard spec and it Baby Doll Eyes that turn, it will not do it again until the uh, guard spec effects have lifted. Which also might come into play a little bit later in the run. Yeah, we just got the cried on um, licking penny animation <laughs> basically back to back here. So yeah, really close on on both sides because this is the same cutscene now for both of them. Fairy's a bit laggier, I think. It's actually pretty neat to see the same cutscene in a different environment, just side by side here. That was weird. My base was or my map was not in the correct location when I opened it. Yeah, that's happened Change. to me before. <laughs> <laughs> Think about like one of my old PBs that did that when I was flying back to the academy. I, I can thank Iron from some recent time save that I just got because I was hitting this cutscene trigger at the wrong spot and this spot is way faster to get to. That's good to know. <laughs> Yeah. So the dark base is the weakest one of all of the bases, which means that the raid itself should be, well, it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't put the support Pokemon at that much of a risk. Plus the actual fight against the leader is also pretty easy. Uh, like the fire leader, Giacomo also only has two Pokemon, one of which being the Starmobile. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing is if you have a move like Aqua Step, which raises your speed uh, when you use it, that speed boost will not be active active when you fight the Starmobile. So initially what I was thinking about doing is you could run a lower speed duck and you could aqu Aqua Step on the lead Pokemon on the fire and the dark bases in order to outspeed the Starmobile. Turns out you can't. <laughs> Doesn't work. So you need to be faster, like, beforehand. Is that why you thought the Starmobiles had weird stats? That wasn't... No, that wasn't the reason, I don't think. Okay. Because that was when I was I remember... running Toxtricity. Yeah, because back when um, 
back when Iron and I first started around in this category, we didn't have the stats for the Starmobiles, so we were just kind of guessing at everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which led to some interesting assumptions that later turned out to be incorrect. Uh, and this is an interesting little cutscene because in all of the other bases, when you fight the Grunt, it puts you right in front of the bell to start the barrage. This one has you facing the wrong direction, so you need to turn around in order to talk to the bell. It's a very minor thing, but it's something people always forget when they pick up this category. Yeah, I always just move forward and I'm running away from the base. So it looks like both of you are only like three to five seconds apart here going into the base, which means depending on how well this goes, we might see the lead change a couple of times here. Found a whole pot block of Murkrow. Sorry, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> seeing lots of Sneasels. They're only in pairs, which is. getting to 30 and going into the final boss fight of a base. This one has a little bit of a load screen as well. Part of the reason why we are using autosave is because in one of my PB attempts oh. a couple weeks ago, uh, I got a infinite loading screen <laughs> on this base. Yeah, sometimes the game just doesn't want to load the next cutscene and gets you stuck in one of these black screens forever. Alright, I'm through. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried. It, was take it seemed to be taking a bit longer than usual. It seems very rare. I think that you're the only person who's gotten it, so... Yeah, on but... that particular load. But yeah, it's like an hour and plus into the run. So it's yep. it's pretty brutal, huh? Yeah, I was on a run where I was 20 seconds ahead of PB, and that happened. <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, I have to bug buzz the Ponyard because the Ponyard because my other two moves do zero damage to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the dark type it's uh, immune to psychic moves, and the sea type it's immune to poison moves. Just to clear that up entirely. <laughs> yeah, so I'm 45 levels higher than the Sturmobile, and I have to use my super effective 120 base power stab move on it, but nothing <laughs> else kills, literally. <laughs> Wave Crash might kill, but it's slower because you get the uh, recoil damage. So, I have a question. Else? Yeah. Shoot. Do you think I should skip Energy Ball for the time save? Ooh. I'm gonna race this close. I'm gonna need every second I can get. <laughs> it's up to you. This moth is technically good enough where I could. What? No, I don't want to risk eating a Hydro Pump and dying. <laughs> no, I'm going to teach it. This price is probably safe. Yeah, it's 
it's funny. There's so a bit. Of, there's a bit of a joke that like all of the best Pokemon in this, the four best Pokemon that do this category are all birds. Technically, Venomoth is 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 somewhat of a bird. It has wings. Bird adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, generally, like, Pokemon that can learn, like, I guess fighting moves and flying moves, Gen they just work really well for the run, uh, in general, like, across all the categories. Some of them, not so much. So Venomoth's an interesting one because it's, uh, it's not a very conventional mon that's used. Uh, and part of the reason why Venomoth is good will be seen uh, in this next two fights. Um, I taught a move... Um, at the very beginning, when I got it, um, called Quiver Dance, which raises my speed, special attack, and special defense all by one stage. Um, my Venomoth has been fast enough where I didn't need those speed boosts, um, but in these next two fights, um, Quiver Dance is going to be very helpful, um, which is part of the reason why Venomoth is so good. Oh wow, Cassiopeia is the boss of Team Star. What? Who could have seen this coming? Oh no, so so back to what I was saying, Cassiopeia and the, the Team Star bases, the five biggest stars in the constellation Cassiopeia have the same names as the five star bases. So Shadar, Kaf, Navi, Rukba, and Sagan, I think are the five. I'm just reading off Wikipedia right now. <laughs> uh, I was and wondering so then... where those names came from, yeah. Yeah, so now that we've finished off, uh, we're going to go up against Cassiopeia and end this story. Uh, we are going to deposit our um, partner Pokemon that we've been using um, because they no longer serve a purpose. And then I will teach Energy Ball, which uh, I'll be using in the, for exactly one Pokemon. Oh, wow. The... the uh... The director of the academy is was Clive all along. How could I have guessed? <laughs> How could we have known? And he's apparently Cassiopeia. All right, here's the uh, theme that uh, Trevaria doesn't like. It's just, <laughs> I just think it's boring. All right, this Oran Guru really, really stinks. Uh, I don't remember. Do students still walk through you in this fight? I think that was a traffic. Oh no! Got some really wacky stuff. <laughs> okay, yawn turn one. That's good. Or he could have the case where the academy entirely disappears. That's another good one. That was a fun one. <laughs> Uh, I have a clip where I was doing this run and the academy just didn't render. Okay, I also got yawn turn one. I got double yawn. Okay, so now I'm going to go to sleep. I should see Dream Eater here. And I say should because... Well, I won't say it. Okay, I got reflect turn two. That's a little bit slower than double yawn. Okay, good. I got Dream Eater. Okay, so one time I got reflect turn three when I was asleep, which made no sense because... Dream Eater does a lot of damage. Because Oran Guru is a psychic type and I am weak to psychic moves. So I got the uh, optimal fight here. And now I just spam acrobatics for the rest of the fight. Uh, I'm oh, also through Oran Guru. I use one Bug Buzz and then I put the Sludge Bomb for everything else. There is still one thing that could go wrong for you, Aaron, isn't there? Not on this fight. No? No, not on this fight. This fight's clean from here. Um, okay, okay. Amoongus. Not trigger, uh... No, no Amoongus. He oh, has... Oh, right. He has uh, Me Meowskarada. Nice. Ah, I didn't even consider didn't that for stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's super, super good. Uh, so, for reference, um, when uh, Clavel does not have Meowskarada as his final Pokémon, um, he has an Amoongus on his team. Amoongus has an ability um, called Effect Spore, which when you use a contact move on it, there is a 30% chance that you get inflicted with a status condition, um, which always loses time and can potentially kill your run. 
Um, so yes, I'm going I... up against the Amoongus right now, uh, okay. but I don't use contact moves, so I don't really care for her. So that also always has the starter that neither your rival nor yourself picked. So we'll always be the starter that is strong against you. In this case, the grass starter for iron and the water starter for fire. So I get to beat up iron's main. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. And we both got to beat up on the other two mains, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, so if, that, if, if the Orin Guru uses Reflect for me, because I'm using physical moves, um, you have to do the fight a little bit differently. The Orin Guru doesn't die to, uh, to Aqua Step, you have to close combat, which is a bit of a slow move because of the uh, animation and also the, uh, the defensive drops. And then you have to Aqua Step later on on his Houndoom in order to be able to outspeed the Meowskarada. Because I should think I outspeed everything here except for the Meowskarada. But that thing uh, would kill me. It has a really great move called Flower Trick. Which is a move that always gets a critical hit. <laughs> and it's used in the uh, Path of Legends run. That is true. Starfields cannot be crit. <laughs> Yeah, Mios Scarada was the um, the first of the Pokemon to uh, dethrone Flamigo as the world record route for uh, one of the Scarlet and Violet categories. Yep. It's really good to see a grass Pokemon be good in a speedrun. Yeah, that really happens. But yeah, um, Clavel apparently isn't actually Cassiopeia. Uh, they called us and told us to oh, meet them. Oh, so who's in this? I wonder who this is. They have a hood on. I have no idea who they could be. <laughs> it's... And they have glasses. And they have an Eevee backpack. Who could it be? Oh my goodness. No it's, way. it's Penny. <laughs> Holy. <gasps> who could have seen this? The only <laughs> other named character that was in the storyline. Uh, since we've been talking about interesting bugs, there's another interesting one that we haven't seen for a while, but um, used to happen where you would get a Pokemon uh, that just, one of your Pokemon would just spawn behind Penny. Uh, and I had it happen with a Hypno once. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. I've had a Toxtricity behind. Toxtricity is kind of derpy. Alright, this is the best theme in the game. Except yep. for maybe the final boss in the any percent run. Good luck with Penny. Thank you. Uh, my Penny is very straightforward. The only time it's risky is if I get a special defense drop. And even then it's generally fine. Okay, I got the bad I got the bad lead. <laughs> Pompadour dude just goes back in character. Hey, apparently. Okay, I got Spike turn one. That's not great. Okay, we're fine. Whoop. So, looks like. Yeah, I'm going to be going down here on Spider's screen. Oh, I used the wrong X item. Shit. Uh -huh. I need to heal again. I was meant to use an X attack there. That was a costly error. Uh, this Vaporeon is the only reason I picked up Energy Ball, uh, so I can get this one shot. Otherwise, if I don't use Energy Ball, I have to use Sludge Bomb on it twice, uh, and it can Hydro Pump me in return, which is very bad. Okay, I got uh, <laughs> my card spec running out. 
Oh no, I energy balled the Jolteon because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, this could be bad. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh okay. I, used the, I used the wrong okay. move. Oh. I used the wrong Fine. item. So, uh. This is not I going well. I've been thinking about your fight and I messed that up, and I think you just did the same. I just got crit. No. Thank you, Jolteon, for the baby doll eyes. It's kind of on pretty fast. I've made I made things. two mistakes here. I just saw Dark Pulse. <laughs> oh no, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so I was plus three. I can't kill this Umbreon at plus three. I have to go to plus five. So, um, well, I'm on Sylveon, so my time is coming up shortly. Um, normally, the category actually has another five minutes after this, um, but it's pretty much just five minutes of cutscene. So we're, we decided to call time uh, at the end of the penny fight. Yeah, spider? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, even without even with the mistakes, I was uh I think I I needed baby doll eyes turn one. That's okay. Uh so these uh these the rest of these evolutions can use baby doll eyes, and I have seen it. Uh it can be a problem. I'm currently at plus five attack. I need plus four. Technically plus three uh from here. So even if both Vaporeon and, and Sylveon use Baby Doll Eyes, time for me. then it's uh, that's fine. Wow, GG Spider. Thank you. The cat one. I right, assume here. Is it, a, is it a sweep from here on, or is this something that? Could uh, yeah, I'm fine. So I'm at plus four attack right now. If Sylveon goes for baby doll eyes, I'll be at plus three, it'll still die. So yeah, like I said, it really came down to the final fight here to attack the space. Iron was a couple of seconds ahead going into this. But uh a mistake or two and some bad iron. Yeah. Team. I can't right believe around. I lived that thunder. <laughs> yeah. You got hit by a thunder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I accidentally energy balled the Jolteon. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I I, uh, I got Psychic turn 1 after guard spec, so that was already bad fight from there, and that probably cost me. Um, and then at one point I used an X defense by accident, and then at another point I used a po just a regular old potion by accident as well. Oh, and no. that's time for me. <laughs> <laughs> GG Iron. GG. Yeah, so there's there's a five minute cutscene, a little bit of movement, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna call it here because I know it's it's not terribly exciting, but uh, fair enough, excellent race, everybody. But we won't explain the rest of the story in case anyone wants to see it, unless uh, unless you want to hear it. But I think we're fine uh, with uh, with where we left off. Yeah. So, you know, fantastic stuff. Any uh, any shout-outs, any extra things to say at the end of the run here? Um, these single-story runs for Scarlet and Violet especially are a lot of fun, and I highly recommend people check them out. Um, they it, it takes a little bit of setup because you need to make a save file to um to actually have the rules that are necessary to actually run them uh, legally. <laughs> but um, once you get it going, then they're super easy to do, um, a lot of fun. Uh, if you're interested in checking it out, you can join the Discord, Discord server for Switch PSR uh, on SRC, um, foodrun.com. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I had. Uh, community's great, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, well, pretty much what Spider said. Uh, these these are fun, really fun games. Uh, the other Switch titles for Pokemon speedrunning are really nice as well. Um, there's lots of really great games if you're into into the the speedrunning of these uh, Pokemon and uh, those types of games. Uh, this category has just been a lot of fun to to route. Um, pretty much when the game came out, this is the category I kind of went to because it was 
seemed the most interesting, most um, out of the box. Uh, and Spider was kind of in the same boat as me for that, so it's been a lot of fun working on this and uh, and moving this uh, sort of to where it is today. So uh, it's been a fun ride for sure. Uh, thanks, Spider, for uh, for racing, and uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. And so, uh, uh, one and one in our head to head in so. marathons. Yeah, you yeah. Beat, <laughs> I beat you last year in uh, in uh, in the Sword Shield race. Uh, so. Uh, We'll see who wins the third match. Also, thank you, Trevaria. It's like 3 a.m. Yes. where you are right now, so we really appreciate yeah. you uh, staying up yeah, this thank late. Thank you, Trev. <laughs> I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Excellent running. Thank you for Excellent having me. Yeah. yeah, thanks, and congrats on uh, hitting the uh, donation goal for the marathon as well. It's really great. Yep. Uh, the the yeah, environment's um... super important to me. I really like being outside and being at the outdoors, so I always love taking part in this event. Uh, and raising uh, money for a great cause. We're doing a little bit of spins on the uh, on the stream as well here, <laughs> just for the <laughs> outro. Uh, yeah, with that, I'll uh, I'll say goodbye to these uh, wonderful runners and commentators, uh, and we will go to a, a brief intermission where I'll give a little outro. Once again, I want to say a good thank you to everybody who's tuned in for Green Gaming Spring 2023. For some reason, I just checked my watch to figure out what season and year it was. It was not on, on there when I looked it up. But uh, we have raised $1,010.50 for one tree planted. You can still go to the donate link to put some extra money towards this wonderful cause. I am going to close off the stream. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And of course, thank you to all the wonderful runners who, uh, who contributed to this. Thank you so much to everybody who helped with hosting and tech. Thank you to Sineth for uh, putting the whole thing together. I am your finale host, Mike. Test? Test. Uh, okay, just making sure.